Thank you for joining us today. Today it is a, let's say, big day. We are celebrating International Nurses Day, May 12, 2021. And uh, we meet uh, in a very special period because we've been through difficult changes and uh, radical changes this year due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And uh, we have gathered here three universities. So we have Taito uh, Talo, Amiedu from Finland, Scuola Posliceală Karol Davila uh, in uh, Romania, Bucharest, and uh, the representatives of uh, Vives University in Belgium. And uh, I uh, welcome you all. I'm glad to see you. And uh, you. hope uh, we have uh, a great discussion and we'll uh, have things to learn out of it because I'm sure you have uh, many things to share with us and we also are glad to share our experience to you. Uh, we shall start our meeting by uh, giving the word to our special guest today. Uh, it is the general manager of Scuola Posliceală Sanitară Carol Davila and the president of the managing board, uh, University Professor Dr. Alexandru Ioan Mincu. So, uh, would you start please this uh, meeting? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you hear me. Uh, yeah. um, I can speak uh, Romanian to John. How are you, John? Ce faci? Bine, mulțumesc. <laughs> Your Romanian is improving day by day. No, put... <laughs> I'm, um, as you can see, I'm a very special person. Um, I think it's uh, obvious from the, um, uh, from the video. Uh, let me start by saying uh, many happy returns to all the nurses across the world. Uh, what a year we had. Um, it's, it's terrible what happened. Uh, maybe if we would have uh, listened more carefully to Bill Gates, uh, not about the divorce, but about the pandemic that it would uh, happen sooner or later, uh, we would have been better prepared. Um, now I'm watching him, uh, how he will deal with the other pandemic with the divorce. Um, we, uh, of course, we worked much, much harder than before because of uh, this pandemic. And uh, besides the, um, the strain of uh, being um, protected with a special suit and uh, being facing um, uh, terrible situations in dealing with patients um, in this pandemic. The most important uh, thing we can uh, contribute now is to learn from what happened and to do um, better next time because for sure it will be a next time. And uh, as Eric Hoffman would say, um, the learners will inherit the earth. Uh, now we have to um, prove ourselves how fast we learn and what uh, changes um, from uh, the scientific blue sky research learning uh, up to or down to um, every procedure that has to be changed and um, every uh, process. Uh, um, has to be changed into uh, dealing with these kind of situations. Um, and uh, of course, uh, nobody wanted to be uh, put through this pandemic. Um, now that we are, um, we have to learn. And um, um, maybe because of uh, this uh, pandemic, we are so used now to have uh, Zoom conferences and to see each other maybe more often and easier than in the past. Um, uh, of course, I still miss some missing, uh, some uh, meetings and congresses in um, special places of uh, physical places of this world. But now um, seeing each other and exchanging information um, through this um, uh, communication software, 
um, that picked up so fast and so well, it's also beneficial. So I would say a warm um, uh, thank you to the organizers and um, a warm uh, hello to everybody in this uh, panel. Everybody looks uh, beautiful. Um, and uh, this is a special day, um, uh, the International Nurses Day that we celebrate. One more thing I would say that the pandemic um, taught us that we are living in a, maybe it's a already um, a passé term, global village. Um, doesn't matter where pandemic started, it spread it all over the world. And um, it's dramatic to block um, uh, frontiers and to stop people from uh, um, uh, moving from one point uh, to another around the globe. So um, it's more actual than ever that we have to be together and we have to act together and we have to have uh, something that nurses have very, very well, the empathy um, um, in order to to put ourselves in the shoes of um, other countries and other systems. If in the European Union, we manage to um, vaccinate from, I think now the daily re record, um, um, uh, best um, result is 75% of the population uh, to some uh, not well-doing countries where um, they hardly reach 20% of the population. There are still countries around the world where very, very few percentages were vaccinated and still not having uh, access to vaccines or uh, they have access to at least funny vaccines that they were not tested uh, properly. Um, so with this in mind, I wish um, everybody um, in this conference uh, to learn uh, together and to have fun. And uh, back to Alina, thank you very much. As you can see, I'm a very special person. Thank you. Um, and it's been a pleasure to see you again after a long time of uh, not meeting. Okay, so uh, we shall uh, pass uh, our... Um, um, let's say, uh, again, another special guest in our meeting. Uh, our general uh, manager uh, told us a bit about this uh, pandemic situation in which we learned to live and to work differently. Uh, and now we uh, pass on the word to our uh, manager, uh, Ms. Mrs. Aurelia Shova, who wants to greet you all. So please, Mrs. Shova. Bună ziua! Mă bucur foarte mult că ne revedem astăzi și vă mulțumesc că ați acceptat să fiți alături de noi astăzi și să celebrăm împreună Ziua Mondială a Asistentului Medical. So, uh, hello, we uh, welcome you all and we thank you a lot because you have uh, decided together and to join us in this special International Nurses Day. Um, această pandemie um, a întrerupt uh, proiectele noastre comune. Îmi amintesc că anul trecut, când s-a instalat pandemia, uh, Așteptam, vă așteptam pe la noi. Ok, so uh, practically the pandemic uh, uh, suddenly broke up our uh, direct contact with you as we were involved uh, in the international projects that we had and uh, we, we were supposed to meet uh, together with students in the international exchanges. Uh, de asemenea, uh, pregăteam uh, un uh, schimb de experiență uh, pentru elevii de la balneofiziokinetoterapie care urmeau să meargă uh, la uh, Amiedu. So we were preparing practically uh, the exchange to uh, Finland, our students from uh, kinetotherapy specialization. 
uh, would have come to Finland Helsinki for the exchange experience in Amiedu. Dar uh, cu siguranță această pandemie va lua sfârșit. Uh, deja semnele sunt uh, foarte bune. But we'll certainly see aici cel puțin semnele sunt foarte bune. Because the, pande the pandemic seems to come to an end, we hope so. Și cu siguranță ne vom uh, continua uh, în curând proiectele noastre. And we'll certainly meet again uh, physically into a direct uh, contact with our projects. Um, referitor la uh, impactul pandemiei asupra asistenților medicali, talking about the impact of the pandemic on the nurses, Pot să uh, afirm că asistenții medicali uh, și-au uh, evidențiat uh, rolul lor important în uh, menținerea și restabilirea sănătății. Au dat dovadă de foarte... No doubt, no doubt the nurses have uh, once again proven, if it was necessary, that they play a central role in the healthcare system. Au dat dovadă de foarte mult uh, profesionalism, responsabilitate, curaj and showed a lot of courage, responsibility and involvement. Iar pentru elevii și studenții noștri, acesta este un uh, un exemplu bun de urmat. So practically they offered our students and to all of us a great example of how to behave and how to uh, be a professional in the right sense of the word. Elevii noștri au avut ce să învețe. Our students certainly had a lot to learn out of this period. Și cu siguranță uh, mulți s-au implicat uh, în uh, voluntariat alături de asistenții medicali. And many of them have been involved in the volunteering together with nurses fighting against COVID-19. Le doresc mult succes în continuare tuturor asistenților medicali. We wish them good luck. We and felicit. Power to work. Și le urez un sincer la mulți ani. And we wish them a happy birthday on the International Nurses Day because it is their day and uh, dedicated to their efforts. Din toată inima noastră, a from, all, noastră. from all our heart. Okay, thank you very much uh, to our uh, manager. Uh, it's been very nice to, to hear and uh, the fact that she emphasized on uh, how much we now depend on the nurses. This means we can feel important right here because we have a lot of people coming from the healthcare uh, uh, system. And uh, now I have the honor to uh, let uh, Heli Pispalatapio, the International uh, uh, Affairs Coordinator in Amiedu Taitatolo, Finland, to uh, share with us a few words about being here today with us on this special day. Please, Heli. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Alina. I'm trying to share you something, some, some presentation slides. Uh, Heli, if there is problem with, uh, with sharing, you can freely uh, talk and uh, share uh, the ideas. If it is okay, uh, I, I think I, I I'll try. I I think I manage. <laughs> Just a second. Okay. Is it okay now? Yes. Yes. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I manage. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. From the first, first of them. There. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, good day, everybody. And 
And thank you, Alina, very much <clears throat> for the invitation to this webinar. And I really wish you all the very best nurses day from Taitotalo with these Finnish flowers, lily of the valley, and the blue anemone, I think it is. It's very nice to see and hear you all here and, and, and very warm greetings from Taitotalo to all of you. The same from us. Thank you. <laughs> Well, uh, yes, my name is Heli Pispalatapio, and I'm working as a coordinator of international affairs in Taito Talo, and I'm a healthcare teacher and a master of health sciences also. And my colleagues attending to this webinar with me uh, with their own presentations, they are Mrs. Sari Carlson, Mrs. Eija Vellman, and Mrs. Anju Alahuhta. So they are all nursing teachers in Amiedu? Yes, yes, they are all nursing teachers in Amiedu, yes, yes, they are professional, <laughs> yeah. And uh, something about our new, um, our new school, AEL Amiedu LTD, is located and affects in two big towns in Finland now in this moment, in Helsinki, metropolitan area, and also in Oulu, in the north of Finland, if you know know that kind of uh, city there. And our acronym name is now Taito Talo, and in English that means the house of skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, very shortly about Taito Talo, and uh, Amiedu Taito Talo has been established in the 1970s, and uh, in uh, 2020, two big adult education centers, AEL and AMIEDU, they merged. And the new name now is, is that, that Taito Talo. And annually we have about 40,000 students and there is uh, about 400 teachers and experts in, in Taito Talo in this moment. And what do we offer there? Taitotala provides various training and learning alter alternatives to choose from, including vocational qualifications, education and training, uh, certificates, labor market training, immigrant training, and also that kind of special training for companies. So we are, we are the biggest adult education center in Finland. Finland now in this, in this moment. And this social and healthcare field, is, it is the biggest education and training area which we offer. Um, and we have uh, many different qualifications and trainings which we offer from there. And, and uh, the specialist the practical nurse training, vocational qualification in social and healthcare, the most of our students, there is a lot of students uh, studying this in this area, especially because there is so lack of uh, good uh, nurses in Finland. So we need a lot of nurses, practical nurses, registered nurses, special nurses, and, and so on. <clears throat> and uh, the international cooperation is one important part, including our strategy. And we have the Erasmus Mobility Charter, and we cooperate with many, many different countries through exchanges. And we have really done excellent cooperation with Carol Davila Nursing School for, for many, many years, from which I'm, I'm very grateful and very happy. And we'll uh, absolutely that we continue that, that perfect cooperation. We are also very grateful that we will go on with this uh, partnership. And yes. of course, uh, no doubt, uh, we will do it because uh, it has been, uh, it has uh, having a great impact, let's say, on uh, our uh, international activity. 
and the students there uh, came with a lot of uh, information and a lot of intercultural knowledge that they uh, implemented uh, here as students, as, as uh, also as future uh, nurses in the field. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It's, it's very nice to hear. And you are always very welcome to Taito Talo, you teachers and, and managers and students, of course. And it's, it's always a pleasure to send oh. our students to Carol Davila for exchange periods. Thank you very much, Helen. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Now yeah. I shall pass the word to um, a nursing teacher from uh, yeah. Taitalo. Yes, Sally, Sally yes. Carlson. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Which is a healthcare teacher and uh, a social healthcare teacher. Sorry. Yes, here I am I. And you can see my picture is from Lake Saima from last, last summer. I have a summer cottage there and this COVID-19 time when you can't travel. So the cottage is the place to be. Sorry, is this an invitation? <laughs> but the presentation. Do I have uh, to I'm... stop my sharing? Yes. 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 Uh, the, the... So we are yes, all right. coming in three weeks. Sorry. <laughs> to give us the address. Red bottom. <laughs> Do I have to? Yes. Stop sharing. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I'm... yes, please. Sorry. <laughs> So uh, you may Here is my, it's okay. my presentation. Do you see it? Yes. Yes. Naku. Hyvin naku. Noni. I'm going to tell you about the content of practical nurse studies, which we at Taitotalo have and what they contain. When a student starts to uh, study practical nurse studies, uh, all students have to uh, study compulsory contents. And there are two professional contents and one common unit, which every student have to study. And the studying uh, begins with promoting growth and participation. And you can see the competence points every, in every part. And uh, all the uh, studies include the mix of theory and a practical training. And uh, it's a different uh, kind of uh, theory and different kind of practical training places. And this promoting growth and participation include these things, that, for example, which um, all the students have to know after this part is completed. For example, plan their work and work together with a team, interact with clients, guide and assist clients in their daily activities and so on. And the practical training uh, place is usually a day, daily care, kindergarten, that kind of place. And after this has been completed, students will continue to promoting well-being and functional capacity, which is 30 competence points. And after this period, the example, students know, plan their work and interact with clients and use the working methods, tools and materials of the field in basic nursing and care, terminal care and pharmaceutical treatment. And this practical um, training place is usually in elderly cares, elderly people's care places, different kind of places. And then these common units, which every student also has to study, uh, is communication and interaction competence, which includes different, different kind of languages, English, uh, Swedish, and of, of course, Finnish. And then it's skills in mathematics and natural sciences and citizenships and working life competence. And every student has to study this. And you can see it's also a very large area which they have to study. Uh, sorry, uh, let, me, let me ask you something about the citizen uh, 
uh, and working life competence, do they have a certain course, a dedicated course to it? Yes, they have a, a, a different kind of uh, courses, which is uh, the, the legislation of the Finnish, Finnish working, working and also how they can uh, take care of their sem selves, uh, uh, that they can, uh, they can work and that kind of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And after those compulsory parts are completed, then students choose which competence area they are going to take. And in Finland, there are eight different competence areas, but at Taitotalo, we all only have five. And care, of, care for disabled, nursing and care, mental health and substance abuse work, care and rehabilitation for elderly people and children's and youth education and care. And I work and with this nursing and care and care of rehabilitation for elderly people's area. This is my, my area. So I so little tell you about nursing and care. Uh, every competence area uh, con concludes two compulsory um, areas. And nursing and care, they mm, complete working in home care and then nursing. And working in home, home care, mm, students mm, know, example, this kind of um, things, uh, pharmaceutical care in, in clients' home, terminal care in clients' home, and mm, so on. And this uh, practical training place is usually a home home care, but but it can also happen in a sheltered home or something like that. And then there's nursing, which is a usually practical training place is a city hospital, but uh, in this COVID nineteen time uh, we don't have received. You, any any places from from hospitals it's been difficult and and so they have uh, taken practical training at, at sheltered homes or some more elderly people's places okay so you didn't have access to make the practical stage it with students in the big hospitals of the city no just a few uh, few places. Mm -hmm. uh, I see. And how did they feel? Because uh, it is interesting to know, how did they feel this, uh, let's say, change? Uh, what was the impact of the fact that they couldn't uh, have a practical stage? Did they feel it? Did they uh, have a feedback on you? Yes, they did, did. They would have wanted to go to the city hospitals or, or, or emergency hospitals, but but because we didn't have places, so we had to had to, to we have to manage invite them to, to <laughs> elderly people mm -hmm. care. But okay. the students were disappointed. Well, <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Kari. Uh, Sari, it has been a pleasure to hear you. I have uh, a few. Also, uh, yes, one more minute, please, so that we okay. can. Uh, Eli, uh, practical nurses uh, work in different kind of places and those so here elderly care, healthcare and daycare. And this picture is from Kannelmäki sheltered home. I have taken that and then I show a couple of um, photos. This is Laakso Helsinki City Hospitals where our students um, were participating in all Helsinki move event two years ago. And then this is Kustan Kartano Senior Center, the second largest uh, senior center in Finland. So it, mm -hmm. it's a large park. Very refreshing place. That, this is from Kustan Kartano also. About and then, five buildings, I think. 
uh, five buildings there. It's it's a very uh, large area. Eighteen buildings. Uh, oh yes, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and this is uh, Tilka, former military hospital, but now a private retirement home, and it's in snowstorm. A very beautiful building. And this is from uh, uh, Alzheimer living living place uh, Pikku Maria. Pikku means little, and uh, this has been the most <laughs> most wonderful place for students to be at, at practical training. A, a lot of rehabilitation in this place. Very, very yeah. much. Very. Uh... And thank you. And all the pictures have been taken by me. It's my my hobby to take those kind of pictures. They are great. They uh, we, we can uh, see the the talent and the passion where it's photography. Uh, <laughs> so thank you very much, Sari. Alina, um, can I ask Sari a question? Yes. Thank you. Um, sorry. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Um, what would be the ratio between? Uh, theory and practical um, learning in this program? Uh, uh, it's all, usually the half is uh, uh, theory and half is practical training. Thank you. And, that, and there was... are also uh, e exams and tasks and so on. No matter the, the year of study? Uh, Two years. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, but, uh, uh, the between theory and practice is the same in the four years. You study four years or three years in the nursing uh, school? The practical the, nursing students, it's usually two years or two and a half year. I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank Master. you. Uh, now we shall pass on the word to your colleague, Asia which you will uh, try to uh, make us understand the impact of COVID-19 on practical stages of students. Asia? Hello, everyone, and thank you very much. Uh, it's nice to come here. And greetings from Espo, uh, it's near capital city Helsinki. And I'm, I'm present presenting from my own home <laughs> here. So I try to find my presentation, just a moment. Hmm. Yeah, share screen. Oh, from the down. Het, hetkinen. Missä? Share screen, vihreä. Green. Mä oon nyt tehokas. Share green screen. Uh, green me, matter, joo, me sinne alas, siellä on semmoinen palkki. Ja siinä odotus, lukee, että odotus, share, share, share screen, vihreä. Oh, joo, joo sorry. Paina, sorry, paina, I, paina I already tried to do, but sorry, I, I'm really... Don't worry. <laughs> It's, so, okay. it's okay, it's, we're waiting. It's, it's not so nice, though, and you cannot manage. Now, and here also, should I need to share? Mm. Now, could you share see? screen? No, no, no. not yet. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, from, paina, now I speak Finnish to you. Yeah, paina, paina sieltä alhaalta ensin se share, share screen. Aivan. Sitten share. se aukeaa semmoinen aukeama, yes. ja okay. sitten ylhäältä oikealta and you should select the document. No, not <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you very much. So you can see all my presentations from here. <laughs> Just a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> there is a lot of presentation. Um, yes, we are teachers, so so should you have so so many presentations. And here is your presentation for you presentation for you <coughs> and probably you can see now <laughs> okay i tell first who, who am i so i'm registered nurse in finland and also in 
Great Britain. So I have studied, um, worked there and then I'm healthcare teacher and also uh, I have master's degree in human rights, European master's degree. So that is my education. And main point here. <laughs> <coughs> So, I'll present firstly this COVID-19 virus pandemic in Finland at the moment. And I did this presentation on Friday and that's why uh, it has changed a little bit only. So, in the beginning of May, COVID-19 situation improving in Finland with no increase in number of people requiring requiring hospital care. Of course, there are in hospital care patients, but not more. more. And here in this map, fin Finland map, the worst uh, situation is in south part of Finland, especially in capital area. Here, I think, as you see, it is this red, red areas. And um, in this, uh, this figure has been presented cumulative number of coronavirus cases in Finland since January 2020. So, and here is here was situation on Friday. So confirmed cases was uh, was 88,033 uh, and deaths were on Friday over 900 and hospitalized only only over 100 and vaccinated in Finland. Our population is um, half uh, five and a half million, millions, so it's almost two millions population has been vaccinated. So I think that it's quite good situation in Finland now. So uh, uh, that we can understand the situation practically, you are also having a pandemic code, a red, orange, and yellow showing the rate of uh, corona cases. Sorry, I didn't understand exactly your question. So yes, I was asking you if in Finland you have this uh, pandemic, let's say, uh, level of. Oh, oh it's uh, in red yellow, point. in yellow level. It's, it's very, yellow. very few. Yes, okay. yes. It's yellow. almost the best, best situation in, in Europe. Okay. I see. Yes, so sorry that I, I couldn't understand first. We are on yellow too. We have oh, to really? down I'm... to the white. <laughs> oh, I th oh, could you, my colleagues, please help? Do you remember if it's white or is it yellow? Uh, because I, I thought that it's in yellow level. Um, it has um, been in yellow or is it white uh, at the moment? Okay, you, you uh, we can check, okay. we can send you a message after this presentation. So, but anyway, it's very good situation if you compare to, to other countries in Europe and in all over the world. So, okay. Then I present a little bit situation in elderly care org organization during this COVID-19 pandemic. And, um, and this is in the beginning of the pandemic during, during uh, Christmas time, last Christmas. So many senior citizens have got infection in nursing, ho nursing homes in Finland, really in the beginning of the pandemic and a lot of elderly people died in nursing homes too. Uh, those infections normally came from relatives but also a little bit from medical staff. Uh, during this time visits were 
were restricted and hygiene levels were, were really sig significantly raised. So, and here is one example of what happened in nursing home during pet pandemic period uh, during last cr Christmas. And there has happened many, many, many things in different other, other elderly care homes, but this is one, one, one example. In one nursing home, all the permanent Finnish nurses were guaranteed uh, because of coronavirus. And the nurses who had been re recruited were students or temporary employees. And, and it happened so that some temporary healthcare workers had refused to treat elderly people, although they, they have been recruited. And, and uh, uh, during these periods, so it was very, very hard situation because there were, were, were very much lack of healthcare stuff and elderly didn't have good care enough during that, that time. It was Bad situation, but I can tell now it's much better situation at the moment <clears throat> because uh, today coronavirus cases have come down among elderly people due to quick vaccinations, and now in especially in in Helsinki, capital city of Finland. Uh, 25 years and older citizens have got vaccination and 95% of this population have got, got vaccination in Helsinki and also in uh, all over Finland, but this is good situation in, in Helsinki. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Inga. Okay. And then I get I, I told also this uh, for Sari told already this um, uh, one part of education education fair fair these students will go first time to the practice what happened in in Finland and in our 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 title Thalo. Okay, you say that uh, the students find a positive point, the fact that time has been saved. Yes, they really, they really find also positive, positive sides. But I, I first told that in the, in the spring 2021, all the education and training of the skills at second grade in Finland was implemented by distance learning. So also we did distance learning only and uh, students were initially taught a lot of IT skills and how to utilize programs like Teams and BBB studies. And they really mentioned many, many other positive uh, sites of what I have written here. <laughs> so they, for example, they told that uh, they, uh, time has been saved and uh, uh, of course, the time spent uh, driving to school and back home. And I, I'm wondering why you mentioned, uh, sorry, that uh, teaching of the theoretical, uh, let's say, uh, substances has been rather successful. Why is it that? Did they attend more? Okay, I, I tell, I soon tell for you <laughs> in the next picture. Okay, okay. so... It has been successful, that's why that uh, these, um, these uh, students will go first first time to, to how to take care of patients and clients uh, suffering from different diseases. And we, we really teach them, for example, pharmaceutical treatment, how to give injections, how to take blood glucose and so on. 
And in normal circumstances, healthcare teachers teach the topics and st you students practice in a nursing classroom. But now we did all those in distance learning. And of course, uh, we use very much Im images, videos, electro electronic mm -hmm. Uh, tutorials, yes, and conversation and teamwork mm -hmm. through, this com through co this computer. Interesting. Yes, that, that was the reason how, how we felt that we have managed. Okay, we try to find the positive and not to focus on the negative. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yes. And also this is very, very necessary thing that uh, cooperation with working life. So, so at this job learning has been very necessary to study all these issues during this pandemic. And we are very grateful and thank, thankful that it has managed because, because we had a lot of contacts with workplace directors from Taitotalo. Nurses has called, nurse, nursing teachers has called many, many times to workplaces. And workplace instructors have taken a lot of responsibility for teaching practical skills. And, and now students have been able to practice a lot of nursing and care and mm -hmm. because they have been guided very well by professional instructors. And uh, these, um, uh, these instructors, they have taken very big challenge and, and there, very often there can be also two, two instructors who take care of students. Okay. And uh, that, that is the reason why they manage quite well. Thank you very much, Asia. Thank uh, you. Interesting to know how, how the students uh, managed to find the positive part, but now you, you have shown us a clear view of these advantages of the technological uh, teaching lessons. And uh, we shall uh, let your colleague also- Okay, yes. Through. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, just Okay, uh, Justice. We have yes. One. yes, can can you hear me? Yes, kyllä yes. hyvin näkyy ja kuuluu. Just a second, I will try to share my screen. Yanju, and uh, I will also ask you to introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, Yes, uh, first of all, thank you very much for this uh, amazing webinar. It's such a privilege to be able to participate. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so a few words about myself. Um, my name is Anju Ahonala and um, I'm a healthcare trainer in Taitotalo. So I'm quite a new trainer. I only started my career as a trainer last autumn. So I've been working in Taitotalo only six months now. Uh, uh, formerly, I was working in the University Hospital uh, of Helsinki and I was working as a teacher nurse. So uh, I was asked to uh, make a so short presentation about safety practices in COVID-19 patient care. Uh, since my tasks as a, a teacher nurse in the University Hospital uh, included uh, this teaching of these safety practices in the hospital wards. So um, uh, my education is Master of Healthcare and I graduated as a registered nurse in 2011. And uh, by, by then I've been working uh, mostly in the university hospitals. So just a second. So focus on COVID-19 okay. measures in hospitals. So this is quite a uh, wide topic. So I tried to make a quick overview since I only have 15 minutes of time. So uh, this is a topic we could talk about all day long. So I tried to make a short, short overview of these different kind of practices that we have been using in different kind of units. So 
Uh, first of all, uh, the safety practices uh, have been developing throughout the year. Now we have suffered from the pandemic almost uh, over a year now, and uh, it has required quite a lot of competence from the nurses to adapt all the time, adapting new information uh, throughout the year. Uh, we, all, we know more and more about the disease and all, also uh, ways to prevent the disease from pred spreading. So uh, first, uh, it could be like that there comes new guidelines, even in daily basis basis. So as a teacher nurse at the university hospital, I had to be aware all the time about the uh, constantly changing guidelines and adapting them to uh, our work community and uh, make sure that all the staff were uh, informed and able to practice the uh, uh, COVID pr pr practices safely in, in all, the, all the shifts in all the units. In Finland, the safety practice guidelines are guided by the Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare and, and also the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health. Uh, so they make like the national, uh, national basis, the national safety practice guidelines for all, in all the hospital districts in Finland. But in addition to that, uh, all the hospital districts and hospitals have their own leading infectious disease physicians who are responsible how to adapt those guidelines in their hospitals. So uh, the guidelines might slightly vary uh, between the uh, health healthcare districts and also between the hospitals. So like the bases are the same, but slight variations may occur uh, depending on in which part of Finland, which, uh, which district you go to. Uh, uh, about the nursing staff, the ward managers, and in the university hospitals where we have teacher nurses are responsible uh, for confirming the competence for all the nursing staff. So they know when they're going to a COVID patient room, they know how to properly protect themselves and how to remove the protective uh, equipment so that they don't contaminate themselves or their colleagues or the clean environment. So. Um, there has been a huge new competence to learn for all the healthcare staff during this year. And for example, myself, I've been working in the uh, surgical wards. So um, there has been no uh, uh, pre-knowledge about uh, airport <coughs> precautions or droplet precautions before, because we don't use them usually uh, on daily basis with surgical patients. But now that we have a COVID pandemic, we have also COVID with surgical patients. So actually all the wards, all the nurses need to know how to protect themselves, even though they are not directly working with COVID-19 patient care in, in, their, in the wards with COVID-19 patients. So uh, there has been quite a lot of new competencies to learn uh, throughout, throughout this year. And uh, now I've been working myself, I've been working now six months in Taitotalo as a trainer uh, in practical nursing, nursing te uh, teacher. Uh, so to make sure my uh, presentation is up to date, I have uh, interviewed three registered nurses who are uh, uh, currently working daily with COVID-19 patients in Finland. So I have want wanted to re receive um, up to date information now from the field. You also have a video, Anu? Yes, yes, yes. I will show it after this, yes. Okay. So, uh, firstly, about intensive care unit, how they're protecting themselves. Uh, the uh, most critically ill patients uh, in intensive care units are uh, taking care in a COVID-19 cohort. And it's a part of an uh, intensive care unit. So the uh, unit is strictly uh, divided into uh, the patients with COVID and with the non-COVID patients. And the COVID-19 area is called the cohort. So airborne precautions mm. are strictly used inside the cohort. So when the nurse enters the cohort, uh, she will uh, place all the uh, persons Personal, uh, personal protective equipment before entering the cohort. And while she, uh, they are at the cohort, the, all the equipment stays on all the time. And uh, they have a special, um, a special area between the clean parts and the cohort room, uh, which can be used for uh, delivering uh, equipment or delivering laboratory samples and um, those things which are needed in the cohort, uh, in and out in the cohort. So there's a, uh, some uh, that kind of a middle space between those rooms. Okay. Uh, 
so that so that they don't uh, get contaminated so the nurse can stay uh, inside the cohort for all day long and the shift can be from uh, eight hours to 14 hours and they're uh, with the, their PPE all, all, the long, all, the, all day long and in the intensive care unit only one nurse takes care of one, uh, one patient for they are so strictly ill at, at the intensive care unit and usually intubated. And uh, maybe an example how, how strict those um, uh, airborne precautions are. Uh, for example, uh, every time they uh, make a, a care procedure or take care of the hygiene of the patient, they need to change, all, uh, change the aprons and, and the gloves every time after that. So they will be changed many times, but the face shields and the uh, FFP3 uh, N95 masks will stay, remain on all, the, all day long. Uh, and uh, uh, one thing that comes uh, as a new new guideline for COVID-19 patients care is that they, for example, change toothbrushes three times a day. So all the toothbrushes of the uh, patients in int intensive care units, they are dis uh, like one time use only, They and then they throw it away uh, to... to um, to prevent the COVID from spreading from the toothbrushes. So it's only, only one time use. And uh, we have a teaching video, a teaching video we have made in the Helsinki University Hospital for airborne precautions. And that's the video I want to show you. And this is done for teaching, teaching purposes inside hospitals to, uh, to learn the airborne precautions. It has a text in Finnish, but I, I will translate. So all the protective equipment is um, is put on. Uh, oh, can you hear the voice? Oh, I want to put it off. Okay. So it is done uh, outside the cohort or the patient room. And uh, Disposable, uh, a long-sleeved apron is uh, put on first. Then FFP3 uh, mask is put on. So it's similar to N95. And then make sure the mask is tight by pressing, pressing it and inhaling and outhaling. We cannot see the, the images, uh, Anu. Can you not see the video? Yes, we can. No. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can. Yes, we can. We see. Okay. Yes. We see. Okay. Okay, then um, the face shield and the disinfecting of hand. And then when you go inside the cohort or the patient room with the COVID-19 patient, uh, in case you need a new disinfectant, take it again. The gloves will be uh, put on in the patient room. Then taking off the uh, protective equipment. And this will be done inside the cohort or inside the patient room. Uh, take off the apron and your gloves and roll them. And then straight to the bin and a new hand disinfectant again. Then remove the face shield or the visor you're wearing and the hair cover. Then hand disinfectant again. Then go outside the room or the middle space if there's two doors in the middle space and take a new hand disinfectant if needed. Then remove the mask. So now we are outside the patient room. And straight to the bin. 
and a new hand disinfectant. So we had to use had to use the videos to um, had to use the videos because uh, there was no possibility for everyone to uh, like waste uh, aprons, waste masks to try them on. So we had to uh, watch the videos again and again. And then when we have real COVID patient co cases, then uh, I, I would go to all the nurses and make sure they know how to use them, how to put them on and how to take them on how to take them off like with the proper measures so they don't contaminate our ward and our colleagues and themselves. So, um, and also what has been like a new competence for nurses is that we, uh, the nurses need to, uh, they are new nurses like orientating to an intensive care unit work all the time. So uh, especially those who are cu uh, currently working in the uh, operating rooms, anesthesia nurses, they are uh, adapting to uh, and learning to work also in the intensive care unit. So the intensive care nurses have been um, in quite a, a task to, uh, to teach everything they know about COVID patient care throughout the year. So in case we have wide COVID exposures or we have a COVID situation worsening, we wouldn't face the shortage of nurses because we have already like trained them in advance for, for those cases. Then um, the COVID, uh, COVID patients are also taking care in, in infection wards. So not uh, if, if, depending on their severity of their case. So they are in our university hospital infection wards and also in the, our primary healthcare hospitals. So the both have their responsibility depending on the severity of their cases. And in these uh, facilities, uh, we try to place the patients in single rooms always when it's possible. So there's no need for like a cohort uh, and the nurse doesn't have to wear their PPE all the time. So they will be wearing their PPE always when they go to the room and leave the room. And this varies a little bit uh, between hospitals. Some uh, with some hospitals only droplet precautions uh, is is, the, is the needed and some hospitals require airborne airborne precautions with all the COVID patients. So it's a little bit about the hospital policy and also uh, some hospitals have um, restricted that if you are less than 15 minutes inside the patient room, then there's no need to take the N95. So if, for example, you only take the lunch tray or uh, just take quick uh, blood pressure, so there, then there is no need to uh, put full protection. But this varies quite a lot between the hospitals. So uh, in these wards, uh, they usually put a room, uh, the instructions for um, PPE in uh, room doors and also a list of equipment, which is required to be in the, inside the room. So it avoids that we don't take unnecessary equipment to the COVID-19 patient rooms. So we always know what is, what, what is found inside there. So we don't have to go back and forth to go get something. So we always have a list of all the, all the equipment inside. And uh, here we also also use the middle space if it's possible to if there's some equipment missing or we need to get something out of the room, then we use also the middle space that where uh, it's a clean space where we can just, you know, uh, leave something and then another nurse comes and gets it, gets it. Mm -hmm. For example, for laundry or laundry or um, uh, trash is changed in the middle space so that the other, another nurse is holding another bag, which is and the trash is dropped in the other bag and taken straight to the uh, trash pits. So uh, uh, I will show another uh, video we have made in the university hospital of these droplet precautions. Also a short, short teaching video. So the dressing is done in the clean middle space of the rooms. So uh, again, uh, long sleeved apron. And then a surgical mask.
face shield or visor, hand disinfectant. And the gloves in the room. And gloves are, of course, needed, uh, needed to change during procedures. Then uh, removing the PPE uh, inside the patient room. So the apron and uh, gloves are removed first and rolled away from you. So you have to put hands straight and roll. And this is this is what, what most nurses found quite difficult to get get this uh, undressed from the PPE uh, without contaminating themselves. Then remove the face shield and hand disinfectant, and remove the mask. The biggest difference to airborne precautions is that the mask is removed here inside the patient room. But uh, the other, uh, the airborne with the N95, you remove it after leaving the room. Mm -hmm. So that's the main difference with these these precautions. I know I'm uh, running out of time, but I have just two more slides. So, <laughs> okay. Then uh, about home care units. Uh, in home care, uh, we also treat COVID-19 patients when they are living in their own homes and not require uh, hospital care. So uh, the home care nurses are also facing COVID-19 19 patients uh, almost in daily basis. Uh, in Finland, home care nurses can visit clients' home one to three times a day. And uh, as a new precautions, all the nurses are carrying uh, their protective equipment with them in their bags. So they will have the whole set of equipment in their own bag always when they go from, from a patient to another in their homes. And every time a nurse enters the patient's home, they will uh, open the door and ask that, hello, it's the nurse here. Uh, are you... Uh, do you have any symptoms of COVID-19? So they will shout from the door and the patient, uh, the client will then reply. And if they have even slightest symptoms, the nurse will immediately get fully dressed in their protective equipment at the door. And then they go and assess the client situation. If the COVID test is needed, uh, we have a, a mobile laboratory nurses. So the home care nurse will call the laboratory nurses who will come to the uh, client's home to take the uh, COVID-19 test. So the client doesn't have to have to go anywhere. They will come to uh, their home to take the test. And while waiting the results, the droplet precautions uh, will be used with all the nurses who are visiting, visiting the home. Uh, in, in that case, the nurses will dress the protective equip equipment outside client, client's home. Usually it's in the corridor, corridor of the house or, uh, uh, or somewhere before they enter the room. And when they enter the client's home and they want, they want to leave, they remove all the equipment uh, inside and they put in two plastic bags and straight to the trash bins uh, outside, so outside the house. So, um, so the home care has had a huge, uh, huge task in learning also these all competencies and I, uh, and I only hope these videos have helped also them. So I have not worked in home care at the moment, so don't know about that. Uh, uh, then, of course, all the units, nurses are informed that there's a COVID case. So remember all your PPE before you enter the, enter the uh, client's home. And mm -hmm. there. And I then, yeah, yes. And now you have a. Okay, this is my last slide. <laughs> so I wanted to show you some statistics also about uh, the coronavirus infections among healthcare workers. And then last year, uh, healthcare workers accounted for 8.5 percentage of all cases uh, among the working age people. So there is, um, they are uh, the same number of coronavirus infections as other working age people. So there is uh, no race in that, uh, in that, um, uh, during uh, among the healthcare workers, uh, thirty percentage of those uh, infections among healthcare workers have been uh, have been 
found they are work related, but it doesn't mean that they are comes directly from patients. So usually they can come from um, traveling by, by public transportation to work or uh, from a colleague in the coffee room while having lunch. So it's not always directly from the patient. And actually it was just in the news that um, uh, we have a health center for only COVID patients and they have treated 27,000 patients during last year and there is no single uh, infection among the nurses. So it has to be said that uh, uh, it seems that these safety practices we are following are looking quite good but uh, so they seem to be quite efficient but uh, of course we need we, we can't say that it's only seems so so we need, need to make a research also so we can say something evidence-based so actually a national research is currently being made by the Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare at the moment so hope, hopefully I can report some good good uh, research statistics uh, also next time. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you very much, Anu. It's been uh, very interesting to know. And Thank uh, you very much. And I uh, have to say good, happy International Nurses Day for all of you. Thank you so much and letting me participate. Thank you. Thank you. The information to students and uh, teachers. Um, and now we shall pass on to John. Hello, John. Hello, hello. Hello. We um, have John Collins and I will uh, let uh, you introduce yourself. Yeah. I just will try to open my video or oh my. Just a moment, I'm searching my. Green middle bot. Yeah, okay. Great, we can see. Okay, that. you can? Yes. Yeah. That's the my, yeah, okay, I will start. The International Nurses Day, yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Nurses of Arts to Lead. We already, I, I would like to wish everyone a happy International Nurses Day. Um, oh, there is a problem with the presentation. It doesn't go farther. Can you still see it? No, we no. have a black screen, John. A black screen? Yes. Uh, Quite great. I will stop and share it. No, everything is blocked. Sorry, I'm searching a solution. Maybe some uh, Belgian chocolates? Uh, or some beer. Anju, lopetitko sä jakamisen? Anju, did you stop the sharing? Anju. No, I don't hear anything. John, your uh, mic is muted. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Thanks. Yes, I have stopped sharing. Oh, so. good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John, your John. microphone is muted. You have to unmute your microphone. <laughs> yes. It seems he doesn't hear us either. <laughs> well, I'll try to send a private message. It doesn't work, I can see. If you want, while we are waiting, I can introduce myself and wait till... Please, John... please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hello, so maybe... hello, hello, everyone. 
maybe John will can fix the problem while I'm finished. I just need five minutes, nothing more. Okay. So, um, oh, wait a second. Um, I see your problem. Uh, okay, so uh, hello everyone. My name is uh, Dries. I'm um, a teacher in, uh, at the Vives University here in Belgium. Um, my aim message uh, I want to share with you is that I'm the international responsible for from the Vives University of Applied Science. That means that I'm the contact person in regards to international exchanges. So uh, it's true that internationalization has been completely turned upside down the last few uh, years. Uh, the last few year uh, so uh, currently physical mobility is very difficult and uh, for some countries even not allowed as you know uh, also there here in belgium just like everywhere every, everywhere else in the world we are facing the challenge of making internationalizations and exchange pro possible in a su sustainable way so um Nowadays, here in Belgium, international students of nursing are still welcome here in Belgium. Yeah, of course, uh, there are some uh, measures involved, uh, just like uh, Mrs. Honala told. Uh, students have to do a COVID test and remain in quarantine when they come here in Belgium, uh, just until they get the results. After a negative result uh, test, uh, students can start their internship at the hospital. Uh, so some of our students also do internship at the inten intensive care unit and um, um, they become expect um, they they can um, they can um, uh, come uh, in contact with COVID patients here in Belgium. So, uh, so the Corona crisis shows us that we are vulnerable uh, as a community. The virus teaches us that well organized uh, collective uh, collective responsibility is important uh, to regain our um, individual freedom, as you know. Uh, so the way we have been dealing with the crisis uh, also shows us how important the digital uh, connectivity is. So uh, possibilities of the digitalization has been deployed as, at an uh, impress, uh, impressive speed. Um, I think it won't be different after the crisis, uh, which we hope to leave behind us soon. So uh, uh, because uh, the current pandemic uh, has brought about a crucial speeding up of this digitalization, uh, I think uh, staying connected on this way will be important. Uh, look at today how we are uh, all connected through the interesting international meeting here from Romania. So thank you for the invitation. Um, I strongly believe that it creates opportunity in the future to stay connected to each other in a sustainable way also. Uh, as mentioned earlier, this meeting is a great example of it. Um, uh, if conditions allow, uh, you are all so welcome here in Belgium, uh, together with a cup of French fries, a good piece <laughs> of chocolate and delicious Belgian beer. So uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> I hope I think it, it is a period in which uh, everyone <laughs> feels the need to talk a lot. <laughs> yeah. And to, to try to uh, share uh, I know. The and the emotions they've been through all this period. Yeah, that's true. That's true. like we all feel it. <laughs> yeah. Dries, thank you very much. Thank you very problem. much for your invitation. But we are all taken. We go to Sari weekend house. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, I have a question? Um, yeah. um, I uh, I was having it in my mind um, to to Finland to Aya. Um, did pan pandemic change the way of organizing uh, exams, annual exams, and then the graduation exams? Okay. Hello. Thank you for your question. You. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably you you mean that uh, did it change very much that uh, shall we manage to do as normal? Yes, was, yes. Okay. Was it so, normal procedure or did you have to change it? Uh, it? It was so that we really mean managed to do like normal. Although we had this distance learning, but we we really really did this distance learning and we taught the other theoretical subject toward during that period when 
student needed to go practice because some organization didn't take students to do practice. But we in, at Taito Talo, we did a lot of work. Teachers did very much work. And uh, we try to give for students as much as possible theoretical education. And I can say that we will manage quite well. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. How was Thank in Belgium? You. How's in Belgium, Dries? Um, any changes in the, um, in the exam pattern? Yeah. Here in Belgium, uh, our examinations, we, we try to find a solution for the COVID, um, and COVID period. So uh, the, the examination were digital. So we had a digital platform where uh, students can cool to do their examination digitally. So um, we as uh, teachers, um, we guided them through the digital examinations and we watched them through the screen. So we have had, um, how, to, how do you say it? Um, we had uh, supervised them uh, digitally. So it was not all, always possible to go to the campuses to do the examination. So we have had to be creative. And, so including uh, the clinical uh, part of the exam, the practical exams? No, the practical training was still on. So the government decided that uh, practical training must go on. So nurse students uh, were the only students who could do their practical um, examinations. Yeah. Nursing and medical uh, doctors. Nursing and medical students, yes. Yes. You yes. were lucky. You were lucky. We were lucky because of the COVID situation. Some students um, had to work at intensive care. So they used the students to help the nurses uh, at the working field. Yeah. Which is good and also um, yeah. a bit risky. And um, in yeah. Romania, we had some uh, legal mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. also um, of um, malpractice. Uh, mm -hmm. Students, they don't have yet the malpractice um, mm -hmm. contract signed, and um, mm -hmm. but that's it. We leadership and uh, decisions in tough situation can overcome this um, uh, some uh, mm -hmm. details. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And I you. see that John is yes. back, uh, and he lost three kilograms in ten minutes. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, yes. John. Hello, sorry, but I, there were some uh, problems with my computer, sorry. No, I will no, start again. We know. We know. Uh, I hope it will work now. Okay. Um, so my name is John, I am a public health nurse and palliative nurse, and I'm, I'm working also at the uh, Vivas University of Applied Sciences. Um, uh, yes, okay. Um, in the past, I already had uh, contact with uh, uh, the Scuola Post Lycea Sanitaria Carol Davila in uh, Bucharest um, because when I was working, of when I'm working as teacher, I was involved in also in a lot of international programs and I often went abroad to do prospection to start collaborations. Last year, when the COVID uh, pandemic arrived, um, I had the opportunity of uh, Vives uh, to leave uh, the school training and the school, school program for one year and I uh, had the permission to go working in the Flemish Ag Agency of Care and Health. As I am public health, public health nurse, it was for me a nice challenge to go back on the work floor and uh, to get a lot of experiences. Good, uh, not only in Belgium, but here you see the map of um, Europe. We already talked about um, um, numbers of cases and, and things like that. So as you can see here, Belgium, little country, um, orange coat, uh, Romania also orange coat. And then you see the um, Finland where I see it, uh, uh, yellow and green. Um, when we compare the number of cases, I searched on the uh, website of the Euro European Center of Disease Control. So um, Romania, 90 million, and, uh, 90 million inhabitants, Belgium, much smaller 
for 11 and a half million inhabitants and then Finland five and a half as already told. But as you can see here, um, for example, when we look um, to the confirmed deaths in the population, you see that in Belgium, we have not have good results. So that means that um, uh, we have uh, had a lot of problems with the COVID uh, pandemic. That's um, for the moment, when we look at the 40 days notification, that's the second uh, column on the, on the slide. You see that we are still, we have still on daily base uh, between 200, 240 and 479 uh, cases each day. So what means that we have started with the vaccination and we are, uh, we are making good progress, but still now uh, we have a significant number of new cases who are detected uh, on daily base. That has to see a lot of with, uh, that has to do a lot with, um, on one case, um, sociologic, sociological and demographic uh, uh, elements. We have a population uh, with, uh, an, an aging population with a lot of elderly people uh, that we care a lot or they are stay in uh, collectivities and in institutions and in collective house facilities. On the other way, it has also uh, an impact of it has also, it is also influenced in the way that we have organized our healthcare. And for that, uh, that's the slide of the World Health Organization. Um, that's one of the um, insights that we have now, that it will be, it is really important to have a good working, a good organized uh, primary healthcare. And that was not the case of, that is still not the case in the Belgian situation. We care, we do have a lot of care. We have good care, high care, but a lot of care in, a in uh, hospitals and in uh, specialized institutions, but the primary healthcare was not uh, well enough developed to face um, the challenge of the pandemics. And third element then is um, the policy and the government. And as you know, Belgium is one of the smallest uh, countries in uh, Europe, but we arrived to have in Belgium eight ministers of health. So that means that the pandemic that arrived uh, was really a huge challenge for the Belgium uh, governments to arrive when I, when I heard uh, the colleague um, Anju who spoke about uh, different uh, protocols and different guidelines, well, the fact that we have eight different ministers in Belgium who have to, who have to manage uh, the pandemic and the approach of, the, of uh, the pandemic made that it was difficult, the start was really difficult, uh, to organize good health. Good. So the challenge was, uh, the challenge was there. Um, and I could uh, go to the Flemish agency um, for health and care to join the outbreak support team. The outbreak support team was created only um, in April 2020. So when the, the pandemic was already there and a lot of people were dying, we had rates of more than 350 per, per, people who were dying on daily basis. So they decided to, to, to create an outbreak support team to give support in the communities and in the collectivities. The community, that's where, um, where I go as public health, health care nurse, to give support in families, to give support in schools, to give support in um, other, uh, for example, factories or um, other low uh, base institutions. But also in a large of number of collectivities that we then I speak about uh, elderly home care, I speak about uh, monasteries, shelters, asylum centers, um, then also uh, kindergartens, youth institutions and uh, other collective um, care institutions needed a lot of support to, to understand how to manage uh, the, the prevention and also to manage uh, the treatment of uh, the pandemic.
When we speak about outbreak, we mean that when there are uh, in, a in a collectivity two people who are uh, infected and uh, who have been detected as, as being COVID positive, then we speak about an outbreak. And in the community, a cluster, when we have true uh, three um, positive cases in uh, an environment where they have a uh, connection and when we, we think that there are other people who also uh, can be infiltrated, they, have, they are re registered as cluster and they can contact us and we have to contact them. The outbreak support team, as I told, was created in a hurry. The team um, is composed by um, doctors, nurses, and also uh, the health uh, health promotion health promoter. Sorry. What is the kind of support that I go that we go to give in the community and in the um, collectivities? Um, information, formation and information. A difficult uh, exercise between uh, too much information and other sides we see that uh, a lot of people don't have enough, enough uh, information. I was involved during years and years in the training program of nurses and for me it was really a, a, a great experience to see that the level of health literacy um, in the population but also um, at the healthcare nurses, at the healthcare workers, was really at uh, um, a medium level. We think that people are informed, we think that people know what to do, we think that uh, people understand the information they get from the government, from uh, different organizations, but on the work floor, in families, in factories, in the institutions, it was really at a basic level. For that, the, the outbreak support team goes uh, to the people and can give them guidance, advice, manage, uh, support the management, and try to keep them uh, keeping, try to make them steps further in how to manage uh, this crisis. As public health nurse, I do a lot of health promotion and health education, and I go into the institutions, into the collectivities, to give them hands-on training. Uh, I do the same work as um, Anu told and gave examples on how to put on on a, on a correct way the personal protect e equipment and how to do uh, the testings, how to involve quarantine measures and how to involve and implement um, isolation uh, measures. Uh, in uh, collectivities where there was really um, and where there are still, we have still outbreaks for the moment eh? with uh, the variants who are uh, getting in, we see that the vaccination in some elderly care has not, uh, we knew that it, it would not give us 100% uh, safety, but there we see that we get um, for the moment new infections and new outbreaks. People are not so ill and uh, we see a good evolution of um, the infection, but there also they need close assistance in the outbreak and in the support. Um, as I work for the um, uh, agency of the government. So we also have the task to collect data to see what is the impact of the measures and uh, the treatments that are in store. But also, uh, for example, now we have research work on what is the impact of um, the vaccinations on the new outbreaks uh, that we have to face and see how we can uh, involve um, the combination of different treatments. And then sixth, what the, the sixth point of support is that we uh, SOS, eh, there is, uh, an, we have screening programs, we have testing programs, we have vaccination programs, but we see that in society, we have some uh, vulnerable people who, are, who, who those programs can't, um, where those programs don't arrive to get in contact with them. And then uh, they contact us as the outbreak support team to go in the houses, to do the contract tracing, to go there to do some screening or to go there uh, to do the vaccinations. Otherwise they wouldn't be helped at all. 
Um, what are the basic principles of the support that we give? Uh, preferably, we work demand-driven, so we only go there when there is a demand for support, but often we see that it is a more a pro proactive uh, uh, approach. We get information from uh, the local major, we get information from the local police, we get information from local healthcare workers who, who ask us to go to see what is going on and to do some interventions. And sometimes when uh, measures and uh, treatments are not followed, we have an imperative mandate to go and to uh, supervise and to um, install some measures. We try to work uh, on the base of empowering and also to strengthen the, net the networks who are already present there. Um, we have to approve our actions and our interventions so they have so they are customized to the client to the clients and as we work from out the um, Flemish agency of care and health we all our, our approach have to be evidence-based so we also uh, are based on the national and international guidelines concerning um, the treatments. Our interventions are always temporarily when there is a need, once that the person can go on and can continue, then uh, our interventions stop. And what is also important, our interventions are for free. So people, uh, citizens, uh, institutions, organizations who uh, use our support don't have to pay for it. Um, what methodology do we use? Well, um, as we had to start on a quick base, uh, we have um, used the standard that we already use in uh, the nursing program, uh, as it is the clinical reasoning circle. Eh? I think you know it. Eh? It's based on six uh, steps. Eh? First, you have the orientation on the situation. Then you have to identify the strengths and the potential uh, improvement areas. We don't talk about problems, but we talk about improvement areas, but because we want to improve the way that uh, citizens and organizations manage the problems. And then uh, sometimes we see that we have to undertake uh, other, other steps. I will give some more information. Orientation. Um, that is my personal, that is for me the most important experience I have, that uh, as a healthcare worker, we are, we like to do things, but before you before you do things, it's really important that you first orientate on the situation, that you put your glasses on and yet you look on the situation from different view of points. Yeah? Uh, there are always elements on the micro elements, the patient and his context, the citizen and his context, but this patient is functioning in a network. And also that network has an influence on what is going on. And then also the micro level, the organization, the local government, the Flemish government, the Belgian government, the European community has also influence on what is going on. And collect first this Q information is really the first step before that you can do or that you can have the intention to do something. What is going on? Who is involved? What has been doing? Uh, what are they doing good? What are they go doing uh, on another way? Why are they doing it on another way? So when I go to the, to the citizen, when I go to the institution, when I go to the um, other community, the first step is communicate and try to get uh, a mandatory um, acceptance to get a view on what is going on and then to um, evaluate together their strengths and their potential improvement. I can only work with them when I agree with the, the client on what are his points on which he wants to improve uh, the situation. Yeah? And for that, I need all my skills as nurse. I need my personal skills. I need my professional skills. But I also need to negotiate. I need to mediate. I need to facilitate. So it's really Really something that um, that uh, in which I I really think that a nurse can do a, a marvelous job. 
Yeah? Um, when we identify these strengths and we identif and either identify those potential improvements, often it's important to do first because before you go to action, it's important to 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 set a step uh, after and to try to consider and undertake some more new additional steps and investigations. For example, um, people say, I think that I am contaminated, but do you have test results? What are the test results? What is um, the status of the environment in which you are living? What is the advice of the other healthcare workers who are already involved in? What is the point of view of uh, the multidisciplinary um, healthcare workers around to the patient? So it's important before you go to the step of action that you have enough of information and that you have a good relation with the different uh, healthcare workers and different- John, uh, sorry yes, for interruption. Interventions. Yes. Sorry for interruption, I think is the right level of energy now to ask you a delicate question. Yes. How much we can push as health educators for vaccination? Uh, oh. We don't. We don't push in Belgium. Vaccination is for free, and uh, I think when you push uh, people, uh, citizens, and healthcare workers, you will get uh, the other results. The most important is that you give them information at their level, so they are able to take a decision at their own. That's my experience. When I try to push people to let them to do the testing or to go to the vaccination program because I say they have to do it. That's my opinion, but it's not their opinion. When I can go step by step with them to convince them what can be the advantage for themselves and for the people who live around them, their children, their parents, their neighbors, and then when they see the advantage that vaccination can get, I see that I get better results. Did you have in Belgium uh, campaigns um, anti-vaccination? Yes, we have. We have them over everywhere uh, around Europe. And sorry, I'm free to say it. I'm working for the Flemish Agency of Care and Health concerning the vaccination, also concerning the vaccination at the level of Europe. Indeed, we have to admit that there, are, there have been some serious problems concerning I, when I think in Belgium Fully about um, the whole Kafka history about AstraZeneca and things like that, uh, that's we have to admit that that's uh, an element on which people start doubt. Will I let? Will I get vaccination? Yes or no? In Belgium, vaccination is for free, and we see that we get um, better and better results uh, on people who are motivated to to, to take uh, the the vaccinations. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what I mean. Yes, sorry. We are uh, running out of time. One more minute, please. One more minute. Um, though, so what is important is that you work from the out, out, outbreak support team, that you join and you establish the outbreak policy at the level of the um, citizen at the level of like organization at the level of the healthcare institution together and then my role as nurse as public health nurse is to facilitate and to support them in the approach and in the actions and to monitor the, the process and the progress to come at the sixth step uh, of the process is to evaluate the outcomes and to reflect on the process and the new layer learning. I think the whole care, healthcare organization and the whole care setting, I hope that they will come stronger out of this crisis. Uh, what I see now is that due to the corona crisis, we have created real working networks. It is not a structure who collaborates together, it is people who collaborates together. And that's one of the, the points that we have started to learn to work together and we have create, we are creating a better tomorrow um, due to this um, infection. So Multumesk, thank you. Hitos. Thank you very much. Well. And uh, <laughs> what you described practically goes to the ideal cycle of dealing with the pandemic. 
And uh, we hope we will also understand here in Romania, and not only Romania, because we are not, we are not uh, the only one who are having problem understanding that uh, following the rules um, by the book, it's the best way to uh, combat this uh, infectious uh, situation. Yes, but what we need on the work floor is people who, who understand those guidelines, nurses who understand the guidelines, but who are able to do the translation translation of those guidelines to the reality on the work floor. And that is one of the greatest challenges I have to face every day, that we form nurses, nurses are well educated, we are, they are well formed, but they don't have the, the skills, not every nurse has the skill to do the translation of the guideline to the reality on the work floor. And that's, that's a different reality. You have to negotiate, you have to, to make compromises. We, we don't live in an ideal world. We live, you have to work, live and work in the reality. And you that's- You can reevaluate all the time, the situation. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Uh, now uh, we pass on to uh, our colleague, Mara, a nursing teacher in Escola uh, Posliceală, Carol Davila. Good afternoon. Who, uh, who will shortly try to uh, uh, present us an overview of how our uh, uh, organizers have managed to assure the practical stage in hospitals and uh, uh, to deal with uh, this, uh, let's say, practical uh, part of the nursing teaching. Please, Mara. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mara, and I'm part of this uh, the school, the nursing school, the post-graduation college, uh, Carol Davila School. Uh, I will uh, try to shift a little bit the gear from uh, the data that you have used and presented. I think it's a wonderful thing that we were able to meet and share so many information and so much information, which is very helpful for us as teachers, for us as nurses. It's an incredible um, event and I'm really glad to be part of it. Uh, now, since we were in Belgium, I have to say that Mohsubit is the, the best gear that I had in Belgium. And uh, <laughs> yeah, just as, as part as we need to, we need to have uh, as well um, uh, a positive side of this uh, um, environment and everything that happened uh, throughout this year. Um, I will change the gear in terms of, uh, I will present what we managed as school to do with our students because it was a challenge and it was a challenge from um, a teaching point and also from being able to provide our students with clinical and um, stages and clinical um, um, work. Now you said that in Belgium it was not uh, it was not stopped the access to hospitals and to the clinics and we tried to do this as well in Romania even though we had a, and we faced a lot of challenges. So the nursing, uh, can you see my uh, my screen, my presentation? Yep. Okay, okay, let's see if I can do it a full screen. Okay, uh, first of all, um, our school has three types of um, nursing um, courses for general nursing, pharmacy, and also rehabilitation courses. So we have uh, three, um, three fields. All these three fields attend courses and also practice temporary uh, authorized practice periods, uh, either in a state facility or a private facility. This is done for all the fields and for all the years, starting with first year of practice, second and third year. However, you know that this happened. I don't think I need to name it because we all know it, right? Everybody's familiarized with this, uh, this picture, unfortunately. COVID-19 challenges. Did it change the entire structure of the academic studies? Did it change the approach on nursing care? Because as uh, my fellows mentioned, my fellow colleagues mentioned, there was and there is a problem in um, teaching and translating regulation from the, um, from the book to the actual workflow. Did it change the approach on handling life as it is? Yes, it did. Yeah, I think uh, it did that for the entire, uh, entire globe. How did it change our approach? Uh, we, have to, we had to move uh, from the offline, so face-to-face -face activity to the online activity. Um, we uh, can say that uh, my generation was born in a mid-tech uh, era. However, it was easy, but different, different for everybody. 
sometimes it was hard to follow or to connect. Uh, we had to get used to devices, to the internet, to the use of the, to the usage of devices. And the problem that actually hit us the most was not moving to, from offline to online. It was the full stop access to hospital medical facilities for our students. That was the, I think, the, the most important aspect of this, uh, um, of this pandemic in the, in the beginning. How did we adapt? If we do not adapt, we die. So we try to move the online, uh, to move the courses to the online platforms, either Zoom or Google, it was fine. Uh, we had, we still had the, uh, the courses based on the curricula. We discussed topics and accepted topics from our students, yeah? We integrated a two-way conversation active learning. It means that we came with information uh, from the nursing part, but we also encouraged them to uh, inform us and to give us information from their daily life because they were at home, they had sick people in their houses, they had elderly people that had to be taken care of. It was a really integrating all aspects of life during our courses, which I, I thought it was amazing. Uh, we were able, uh, I don't know if it was uh, because the, this school has so many years of practice, but we were able to maintain a steady flow of students into the hospital. Not as many that like we had before the pandemic. However, we were able to send, um, let's say, 80% of the students into the hospital areas. Um, everything that I heard today uh, all the presentation have stressed out the importance uh, of good management care, the importance of how to not get contaminated and not to contaminate other people. This is what we tried also to uh, present them and make them aware of this uh, aspect. It might be a small aspect, but even washing hands and how do you wash hands properly, it's um, a basic concept that we took care of. Uh, practice sessions. Yes, we had them and it was really interesting. Uh, we had two types of uh, contracts, uh, the partnerships that the school had and we were able to send children into the hospital area, nursing care system, dental facilities or for other people because uh, most of our or many of our students are not from um, the, um, the city of Bucharest where we are located. So they are from rural areas or um, they have to, to travel a little bit further. So we were able to uh, prioritize this and uh, they were able to go to a clinical trial or a, I mean a, a practice session into their hometown. Uh, and for them to, uh, to actually go to the practice session. Did we send them all out? No, we didn't because we didn't have uh, space and room for that. Uh, unfortunately, the ones that were actually hit by this, uh, this problem was the first year. They, as we said, we, they took one for the team. However, we managed to uh, integrate in that period of uh, when they were supposed to be in the hospital, we were uh, able to integrate weekly masterclass courses. It means that the biology teachers, the physiology teachers, nursing teachers, and everybody joined and presented at each session different topics. So they were able to integrate uh, what happens in the pandemic with the children that were actually not uh, going to the hospital. And we implemented a really good testing and learning um, method we used Google Forms for everybody, first year, second year, and third year, so they can test their abilities, the information that they gathered uh, throughout the year. Was it good? I think uh, if we take the silver lining from the pandemic, I think it was good, um, not because we change and we are not looking face to face and we are not face to face, but uh, strangely, um, everybody, participated in the online masterclasses. Even though they were in hospitals, they went to the classes as well because they said, well, this is interesting. This is something new. It's not only textbook. We want to participate and uh, be part of this community. Uh, I think we learn better to communicate, to ask questions, to be confident in our own skin. Um, I think this um, electronic world has good aspects and bad aspects, but it was good. Uh, we were able to find more information 
and by asking information and be part of this uh, uh, internet uh, era, we discovered that we can uh, gather more topics to discuss with our students. We learned how to deal with people in great need and desperation because there were situations where people were actually desperate of what it was happening around them. We learned how to live a full life even though we are restricted. Yeah, and everything that we know now, it's no longer the normal. We cannot accept and ask ourselves uh, when is gonna be um, this pandemic over because we need to get back to normal. The normal is no longer here. As you can see, we are all gathered on Zoom. We are from all parts of the world and we still manage to make a community. Um, and what was the most important thing that I think our school did for our students uh, for, the uh, for the third year, we were able to join almost 400 and even more students to have the mock test of their final exam. So everybody was able to go on Google Forms instead of being live in a uh, school. They were all connected on Zoom and the school managed to do the mock test for the third year for their graduation period, which was an amazing, uh, an amazing event for us as teachers and also for them. Um, the participation was good. Everybody's uh, interacting in the Zoom lessons. And uh, I think from the bad part of the pandemic, we also had a good part um, that, we, that we managed to, to uh, give to our um, students. So okay. thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. And before we give the words to Jelu Costache, our uh, nursing teacher in Școala Postlicială Carol Davila, uh, I was uh, wondering, because there is a question addressed to John. John, if you can answer us, uh, if you have any information about the Belgian uh, vaccine that it's supposed to give us uh, life immunity. Yeah, um, this information is uh, really premature. When you talk about the Belgian vaccine, it's um, the the the, um, the factory in, in Belgium indeed who is developing it, but um, they are still doing uh, tests and pretests. And it's the I po I posted the website to the link to the San Sensano organization who is doing the follow up. I think um, it's, it's too too early to, to say that it will uh, be able to uh, work uh, lifelong. What we see is that it has already a better impact than the effect we have on uh, the new uh, vaccines, vaccines that have been given. In Belgium, that's Pfizer, that's Moderna and AstraZeneca. What is developed now has a better uh, impact and a longer impact, but um, it's too early to say that it will give a lifelong uh, long effect. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, and it's followed by the European community also, so um, well. yeah. We'll it, takes time. it takes time. Uh, Jelu, please, uh, now we have our colleague Jelu Kostake, who had the direct, uh, let's say, a relationship in, uh, uh, to our guests. He has been uh, uh, visiting uh, Vives University and also had a um, practical international exchange in Amiedu a few years ago. And uh, he will try to uh, come to us with this perspective of uh, how he managed this period with his students. Please, Jello. Uh, hello, I barely managed this period, I think. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Hi. yes. And uh, happy to see you. Some of them I, uh, I saw you before, physically, in flesh and bones. <laughs> <laughs> and the good periods, yeah, how times. Um, you are representing uh, uh, two of some educational uh, institutions that are um, close and dear collaboration. And uh, well, uh, personally, uh, I had the honor to be for uh, uh, experience exchange. Uh, those periods, uh, Personally, uh, I think that changed me, reached me, and uh, uh, I saw the results later, and I'm still seeing it. So, um, uh, I must say that the pandemic has impoverished us from this point of view, and um, that's why I'm very happy that 
event gave us a chance to see and hear each other again. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing you, I'm hearing you, uh, even I, I'm looking at the, at the screen right now. So uh, uh, this period that is not finished uh, uh, forced us into an um, unprecedented situation in which we had to make huge efforts individually and uh, as a team to adapt, to change our teaching strategies, uh, to find new ways for uh, transmitting knowledge and uh, very important to motivate students. Uh, it was, and it is a period in which stress frustrations increased. Every teacher, every student, I think all of us, uh, went through a SARS-CoV infection episode or had a loved one in this situation. Uh, most of us were isolated or locked in the house for long periods of time. Uh, our students endured the insecurity of tomorrow, so uh, the distrust of the future. The creation of the big wave uh, of more or less true information. So, um, in my opinion, the, the great challenge uh, uh, was not necessarily the educational process, but the constant struggle to keep them optimistic, real, enthusiastic, with faith in the power of science and uh, good. It has been and continues to be an extremely important exercise in terms of uh, flexibility, creativity, adaptability, which are important qualities of a nurse, after all, isn't it? And, uh, as a teacher, it's hard, sometimes it's hard to lead someone when you have moments you have you need to be leaded. So uh, training flexibility and adaptability from the point of view of the act of uh, nursing uh, care has major influences uh, on the power of, of personal adaptation in everyday life, I think, to, to, to each student. Uh, I was talking about the, the good influences uh, of international traders. Uh, I had the chances to see both Finland and uh, Belgium, how, how you manage a virtual training. There was a, a very, uh, the period next to beginning of the, the pandemic, I think in November in, uh, in uh, Belgium. Yeah. 19, yes. So, uh, I saw there, um, I saw a uh, sim lab, simulatory lab. Uh, I think it, it's something at the border between theory and reality. The, and uh, uh, the transition, it's much easier with this sim lab. But uh, I tried to reproduce and uh, with the means at my disposal, a situation in which uh, uh, students have to react in real time to visual and uh, audio stimulus. Some images, some short movies or verbal comments uh, simulating real situations. So closer to the act of care of a living human being in which, uh, you know, un unforeseen moments are always present. Uh, they had to do right choices in right timing. So that's life. That's life on a, on a, on a nurse life, you know, yeah, on a nurse uh, a registered nurse, and uh, it's just life for everybody, for us. 
Okay, certainly, Jello, this situation has made us uh, develop new skills and new strategies. <laughs> and uh, uh, hope everyone has uh, reached those skills enough yeah, to be prepared. We, we try to find personally ways to, 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 to do better our jobs. But uh, also, as a team, we, we try to find some paths, some protocols to do better. And I think uh, uh, the collaboration between us, you know, uh, among Europe, because Europe is our big house where living, teaching, uh, working, loving and dying, after all. <laughs> so uh, uh, we have to collaborate and to spread the information and, and to do, uh, I think, the same uh, level, uh, the same tools to teach them uh, and to get the, the final product uh, uh, better to nurse and uh, at the highest level uh, quality. Okay, thank you very much, Jello. I Thank shall you. this uh, discourse, uh, short discourse to Raluca, our uh, nursing colleague, Raluca Brad. Yes, hello everyone. I'm hello. sorry because I have some problems uh, with the internet and uh, if I turn on the web camera, the signal is not so good. So uh, I hope uh, you can hear me. <laughs> okay. So um, my name is Raluca Brad, I'm a nursing teacher and uh, also I'm responsible for communication in uh, our school. Uh, first of all, it's great to see you uh, and I want to thank you uh, for allowing me to tell you about the experience of our school in handling the COVID-19 uh, in the training of nursing students. Um, I want to point out that although many of the situations that were presented here um, have been similar in other countries and uh, universities and of course uh, in our school. Uh, Școala Apostolicială Sanitară Carol Davida is a well-known uh, educational institution with a tradition of 30 years, responsible and adaptable. The pandemic caused by the coronavirus brought major changes forcing us to adapt and make unprecedented decisions. Since uh, March 2020, we decided that the school must continue. And of course, we believe the same now. But uh, we want that the educational act to take place in the safest possible conditions, both for students and of course for teachers. That's why many of them are, uh, are already vaccinated against the COVID-19 also the students and the teachers. Nurses are the professionals which are the most requested in the Europe's healthcare system. And in the last year, we saw that. In the last year, it was necessary to accept the challenges and to adapt. Responsibility and adaptability are the key words of our days. Together, we find solutions to any situation and move forward with confidence. In March 2020, all clinical internships were suspended and the schools were closed in all over um, uh, the country. We adapted quickly and in only two weeks, we started these online courses. It was completely new for teachers and students. Patiently, with more time uh, allocated to discussions with students in which we focused on their problems, uh, concerns, we easily overcame the initial emotions and adapted. Unfortunately, it was harder with the internships. Access was not allowed in the demonstrations room either. We adapted again. We searched for many teaching materials online, demonstration films or improvisations. In the autumn, the practical internship for the students from the third year were resumed. second year and in the winter uh, partially for the students from the first year. Initially the access to large hospitals were allowed to a smaller number of students then their number increased. Some students have opted to practice in smaller offices internal medicine or family medicine. Theoretical courses continued only online. Despite or due the pandemic nursing students keep confidence in their profession and I think that's the most important thing. Since the spring of 2020, 
Nursing education has adapted in the most countries in Europe and internationally, adopting various strategies. Creativity has been required to keep nursing students in theoretical and clinical training to enable them to graduate in the best conditions and be competent to join the nursing teams. The period was a source of stress for all the actors, and that's a fact. While the pandemic is still present, its impact should be measured at different levels. Educational innovations, nurse educators training, the evolution of nursing education programs. Some challenges and problems. Organizational issues, teaching schedule, appropriate electronic environment and tools, workspace. Technical issues, like me, internet connection, hacker attack, personal computer. Content, teaching methods, assessment methods. Some financial issues. Laboratory and practical work, clinical practice. Restriction of practical and clinical learning experiences. Communication with students, last of face-to-face -face teaching. And also some psychological problems. Lessons learned, adaptation, to challenging situations, necessity of working together and exchange for nursing education during pandemic, necessity of improvement of technologies, teaching and evaluation methods and communications. Thank you for your attention. And I hope to see you soon in Romania. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Raluca, and um, uh, you have uh, presented us a very, let's say, human perspective on this period, the fact that we uh, should be together even if we are uh, separated, yes, physically speaking. And now I shall uh, finish this uh, meeting we had uh, by having the point of view of uh, one of our students, uh, Anka Ulmanu which is working uh, in an aesthetic clinic in Bucharest. And uh, I will let Anka um, start her uh, short discourse. Please, Anka. Hello, uh, my name is Anka and I've been my uh, journey in the clinical um, um, field has started like 10 years ago while I was working in a dermatology clinic. Uh, from that time to the years, I've come across many, uh, many types of patients, but uh, everything uh, I knew changed when the pandemic hit. And the last year, most of the patients can canceled their appointments, being scared or um, um, not being informed enough. Um, after the lockdown, also the type of patient that came to our clinic changed. Uh, there's a mental state. Uh, um, and I was doing some research on the internet and found a very interesting article about the lipstick effect. The lipstick effect is a theory that when facing an economic crisis, consumers will be more willing to buy less costly luxury goods. Instead of buying ex expensive fur coats or vocations, people will buy expensive lipstick. Uh, the underlying assumption is that the cons consumers will buy luxury goods even if there is a crisis. A more controversial psychological research also indicates that women can become more competitive during recessions when it comes to uh, what psychologists faithfully call mate acquisition. In my case, uh, in the clinic, I observed that women start investing in themselves more and lipstick was replaced uh, either by um, uh, high, uh, operations. The highest demand was on breast augment augmentation. Second was uh, facelift and third was liposuction or less invasive procedures like Botox or fillers or suspension threads. Um, as a conclusion, I will definitely say that my job has suffered major changes. First of all, the volume of patients has increased. Um, there is more pressure now in uh, respecting the distance, uh, but in the same time, you have to be uh, very kind and um, thoughtful to the patient because they are more fragile than before. On the inter level, we had to think uh, turning the kitchen to it or to maintain distance between us as colleagues. We had to wear beside the mask, a plastic face shield, 
and the, the number of gloves that you were using in the clinic has increased. Uh, also, we have multiple areas with the disinfectant in the clinic. We also ad adopted a strictly protocol regarding the patients from taking the temperature when they enter in the clinic, uh, to um, a recommendation that they are coming alone, um, not with their partners. Um, patients buy more beauty products now, beauty treatments and cosmetic pr uh, procedures than before, mostly because they are uh, working remote and that allows them to have extra time to take care of themselves. Um, some of them even uh, coming to the clinic with their laptop and having meeting, meetings, Okay, and that's it. Thank you, thank you very much, Anka. And yeah, one yeah. of your uh, guests we have, Andre, also a student of ours, who will uh, share his experience in two minutes. Please, Andre. Bună ziua. Bună ziua. Uh, aș vrea să salut uh, toți profesorii, toate cadrele mele didactice. Okay, Andre, will you speak English? Da. Okay. okay. Hello everyone. First, I want to introduce myself. My name is Ionit Andrei Octavian and I am a second year student at Școala Postliceală Carol Davila in class F. The subject I want to discuss with you today is the COVID-19 pandemic and my experience on the field. The reason that I chose this subject is because I think it has a major importance nowadays. It's a challenge for everybody, especially for us, the future nurses. I always consider myself as a very given person and absolutely love to help people in need. <clears throat> Ever since the pandemic started, I want to be a volunteer in hospital or other medical clinics, but I was declined a few times because I didn't have a license to prove that I am a nurse and because of the gravity of the current situation. After several attempts of trying to be a volunteer, I didn't want him to give up my wish of helping people during the pandemic. So I find the job at OK Medical. In this company, they have collection center all over the country. And their main task is testing people when they develop virus specific symptoms. RT-PCR, IgG, IgM. Everything I have listed are part of the test offered by this company. During the job, I'm always with an experienced nurse and I can observe the techniques that she used. Although many people have denied the existence or severity of the virus. I can honestly say that this virus is real and I have noticed that it can cause very serious problem. In conclusion, I can say it with more experience considering that I was recently in quarantine. Thank you for your time, for this opportunity to actively participate in this project and Last but not least, thanks to Miss Alina Ionitsa, my English teacher. Okay. Bye bye. Merci. <laughs> okay, so uh, time has passed very fast. Uh, we have uh, uh, had the two hours and 20 minutes meeting, but it was very interesting because I didn't want to interrupt uh, the guests because uh, they have uh, something new and different each of them to offer us today as information and uh, as uh, experience. And um, what can I say as a conclusion, if uh, I don't know, uh, our general manager wants to conclude this meeting or shall I do it? I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> So we've missed each other, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, thank you very, very much. And uh, hope we will uh, have a more, uh, let's say, a richer experience and a richer overview on this period. And now we can uh, pass even more easily through this period. And we hope we will see the light at the end of, uh, let's say, uh, this uh, summer. And we can take our uh, back... Uh, our lives back because this is what we all want. At least 70% uh, of what we had before the pandemic. 